信じられないこんな人が本当にフェアリーテールの一員なの時は満ちたシシ俺はあんたを超えるどっちも俺のフェアリーテールにはいらねえマスタチロ今は敵でも同じギルドの魔導士だ俺の命令が来ているのかお前にするあんたを超えるおやつのためじゃねえ俺が俺であるために一人の男であるためにだ<笑>くだらねえなこんな人格で俺をどうにかできるとでも思ったかミスタだフェアリーテイル,ル。俺が目指すのはこんなんじゃねえ。我慢の限界だ。フェアリーテイルは俺がいただく。Number three, Loxus. Oh my god, I finally get to talk about Fairy Tale. God, do you know how many great antagonists there are in the Fairy Tale universe? Almost all of both the main antagonists and the side antagonists have depth and are usually easy to hate. And the best part is, they're almost always introduced with a connection to something else already established. So you're always immediately more interested to learn about them than, I don't know, cliche shonen bad guy number 065. For example, Leon was trained under the same master as one of the main characters, Gudgeel is the second dragon slayer you learn about, the entirety of the Orochi and Seis group as children were involved in the same horrifying incident as one of the main characters. I could literally do this with practically every single antagonist in multiple ways. But probably the best example of this is Luxus, who's already an established character before he even becomes an antagonist. Anyway, I know some people are gonna light me up for even breathing the air that was at some point used to make the sound fairy tale, but honestly, to me, calling Luxus a bad antagonist just because he comes from an anime with a reputation like fairy tale sounds really stupid. Like, do you wanna know how stupid I think that is? Put Luxus in bunny ears. That's how stupid. Not to say Fairy Tale is a bad anime. No, I fucking love Fairy Tale. I put my dick in Fairy Tale. Don't ask me how that works. But damn, I don't care what you say. I'm giving credit where credit is due. So then, why is Luxus more deserving of place number three more than anyone else? Luxus is debatably the strongest wizard from the Guild Fairy Tale. He's also the grandson of the Guild's master, Makro. For the first couple of arcs of Fairy Tale, he appears and disappears. And for the most part, he only appears only for the sake of being a giant fucking penis. In a guild that basically embodies community and camaraderie, Luxus is easily the odd one out. In the Phantom Lord arc, the whole guild is in serious trouble, and when Mirajin, who by the way is the sweetest, most lovable goddamn character ever, calls Luxus and begs him to help, he laughs at her, makes her cry, and tells them to clean up their own mess. There are a couple of other scenes of this dickery, but this one was the highlight. In terms of personality, I'd say he's pretty damn distinctive. He's basically one part punk, one part arrogance, and like ten parts bitch fit adolescent. This is something I really like about Loxus. His personality blends so nicely into his depth. It makes perfect sense as to why he acts the way he does. Loxus, while easily one of the strongest wizards in Fairy Tale, still grew up under his grandfather's shadow. His achievements weren't equated to him, they were blamed on being the grandson of the Guildmaster. Mix this with the fact that his father had to be kicked out of the guild for endangering members, and you have a very nice concoction for a very angry adolescent who just wants to find his place in the world. Among other things, this leads him to try and take over the guild by force, because he believes that if he is the guild master, he will finally get the respect he thinks he deserves. How awesome is that for depth and personality design? If you thought it was interesting to give a child incredible power, just imagine what it's like to give that to a teenager. He's even got the whole angry adolescent character design going on. What with the lightning theming and the headphones. I wonder what he even listens to on those headphones. Hmm. Aside from being deep, distinctive, asshole ish, hugely powerful, and useful in power shortages, Luxus has two amazing moments that round off his character. Woo! So, Fairy Law is an incredibly powerful magic spell that inflicts serious damage on literally whoever the user believes is an enemy and leaves everything else untouched. You see, the Master uses it in one of the earlier arcs, but near the end of Loxus' arc, he chucks the biggest fucking temper tantrum and decides to use it on the entire guild, stating that he'll just rebuild it from the ground up. And you're all like, oh god, there's no way out of this, because he succeeds in casting it too. But after the light recedes, no one is harmed. The idea is that Fairy Law only harms those who you believe are truly enemies. If Fairy Law didn't hurt anyone, it means that deep down past all the anger and aggression, Luxus really does care, and that the guild and its people has actually had an effect on him. 
It's at this moment that everyone realises that there's still good in him, and even Luxus in turn begins to realise that he himself doesn't really want all of this. It's fucking fantastic. People are all like, oh, why do you like a piece of shit like Fairy Tale? This, motherfuckers, this. This kind of strong, deep emotional drama and development executed in such an elegant way is something that you will always be hard pressed to find in anime. You can make as many jokes as you want about how there's no blood and how all the female characters suffer from big boobitis, but don't you dare try and tell me that Fairy Tale is incapable of achieving the stuff that matters. Woo! But hey, you know what? We're not even done yet, because there's a second high impact moment for Loxus. After everything is said and done, Loxus, like his father, has to be kicked out of the guild. The master can't make an exception for him. The strict system is how the guild has survived so long, as he puts it. They're forced to kick him out, but they leave him a token of goodwill. In the Fantasia Parade, the event that the arc was originally leading up to, all the characters use a hand sign that Luxus made up when he was a kid, so that he could send a message to his grandfather even when he couldn't see him in the crowd. The message means that although I can't see you, I'm always looking out for you. And when Luxus is just about to leave, he sees everyone doing this sign as a messenger of no ill will. Despite everything, they still treat Luxus with kindness, and Luxus... Luxus cries. It's in this moment he finally regrets his action and appreciates the kindness and love they've always given him. I'm tearing up, motherfuckers! Okay, that's it. I got nothing more to say on this. Gonna go sit for a while at the bottom of the giant ditch I dug yesterday. And hopefully, in the morning, I'll have a fucking pool! It's moments like this that clearly blow every other contender so far out of the water. No one on this list so far has had moments as powerful as Luxus. And combine this with the fact that he is distinctive in personality, deep in character, and easy to initially hate, and I don't think I need to explain why he's this high. When people talk about anime antagonists, I never hear Luxus' name. But honestly, I think he's one of the most underappreciated geniuses of good character design. <sighs> anyway, on that note, I will see you at number two.